Hi, my name is Teal, and I'm your host for the SweatNet Be Amazing podcast, where we share stories of amazing women who live in our communities. My hope is that you will feel encouraged and inspired after listening to each episode. Today, we have Jen Forsyth, owner of Start to Finish. She's a runner and a mom to three boys. Welcome to the show, Jen. Thank you so much, Seal. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, so glad to have you. Uh, we, we've become friends over the past year and a half, and uh, I'm excited about what we have coming up, and we'll talk about that later. But first, I want to dive into a little bit more about you uh, and how you got to Start to Finish, and that all starts with you running yourself. So when did you start running? Yes, I was a swimmer growing up. And so if you know many swimmers, they do not like to run. And I didn't really either. I didn't run much until um, I think it was toward the end of my college career. I swam a little bit in college. And but toward the end of that, I had a um, boyfriend that broke up with me. And so (laughs) I had all this time on my hands all of a sudden. And I was like, well... I might as well do something. So I started doing triathlons. So I got in with a really great group of people um, in Northern Virginia after I graduated from college, got in with a swim group, you know, started running with them, started riding with them. And for probably the next 10 years, I was really into it. Traveled all over the world racing. I met so many great people. I met my husband in Australia racing. Um, So I was a triathlete really before I was a runner. And after I had my first kid, uh, who's 17 now, so this is a while ago, I raced for, I did triathlons for one more year. And then after that, I just sort of, you know, realized maybe it was time to hang up the training, you know, hours, not put quite so much time in and just started, I did a little bit of swimming and then, but really started getting into running and found that it was, you know, it's easy to do as far as you don't need a pool membership. You don't have to have a fancy bike. You can throw your running shoes on, run out of the house, you know, get a 45 minute run in great workout. Um, so it's, it's been a wonderful, um, you know, part of my life really ever since then. Yeah, it's an amazing outlet. I feel like that's what a lot of people, I know for me, that's been a great outlet since this whole COVID thing hit. Uh, I started running last year and, but because of limitations on gym and all that, just to be able to go outside and run is amazing. And it's such a great way to clear your head too. (laughs) It really is. And it has been so cool just to even, especially when we were really stuck inside the house to look out of our window and see so many people running, walking, cycling, you know, working out. I know we own some running stores as well. And lots of people that have never run before are coming in and getting shoes and asking about how to train. And it's, it's been really great to see. That's awesome. Well, so now that we're kind of, you're already kind of talking about business wise and what you do, so where did start to finish? Like, when did that actually, you know, start and, and really what inspired that? Well, um, actually the precursor to start to finish was, um, a company called races online. So I, with Donnie and I and our kids, we used to live in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, a guy that we train again, there's a triathlon connection guy that we trained uh, for triathlons with owned a print shop. So he and I, about 20 years ago, got together and started an online registration company. So we were racing triathlons and we saw that there was a need in there for um, another registration company. So we developed that. My brother was involved as well. We developed that and it was kind of a side gig for probably 10 years until it started to really get to be a nationwide registration company. So I started focusing more on that than the other work that I was doing. Uh, About 12 years ago, we moved from Memphis to Charlotte. So I was still doing races online. My business partner though had started start to finish in Memphis. So that had been going for a couple years. We moved to Charlotte. We ended up buying a running store. And then we were kind of like, we really need, you know, something else. 
Um, so we decided to put on a few races in Charlotte under Char you know, as Charlotte running company in Charlotte. And I wish I could say, I, you know, I had this grand plan from the beginning, but I can't give myself that much credit. Really, we just sort of thought, well, we'll let's put on a few races and kind of see how it goes. We'll have races online. We'll do start to finish and, you know, see what happens. And over the next 10 years or so, we just grew steadily grew year after year um, until now when we work with about 150 races out of the Charlotte office and about 150 out of the Memphis office. That's just really cool how it's neat how things evolve or I don't want to say just happen, but it's so cool to, you know, you start with something and then all of a sudden it grows into something else. And maybe, and like you said, it wasn't like you had this massive plan, but it just like has evolved into this amazing um, company that you have. And I know that I've seen you at the races, you know, I'd ask you if you're, if you're, if you guys are running it, you know, and I always look for you to be there, but out of all the races you do, is there one that you, that's your favorite that you're connected to or involved with? No, that would be like <laughs> saying one of my kids is my favorite. I mean, I do have a favorite, but I can't say which you one. You can't say which one. She's going to keep it No, guessing. I mean, to, uh, to be honest, we work with so many great clients. I can't just stress enough how wonderful these organizations are and they all have such an amazing story. And um, really I, and all of the people that work for Start to Finish, we all feel so grateful that we're able to help tell that story, raise money because they're doing wonderful things in Charlotte and across the nation sometimes. Um, so it really, all of them are special to us. I mean, it, it really is the honest truth. They, they really all have a special place in our hearts. I love that. It's, to me, it's what you're doing is pulling community together and using running as a way to do that. And it's, it's really, really cool. And I'm excited about our race that's coming up in October. <laughs> so uh, for more on that, you're going to check out the Be Amazing Weekend website. <laughs> but so you have this amazing in-person, you know, races that we can go to. COVID-19 hits. All of a sudden there's this, we all have to pivot. And this really forces you to have to pivot and go virtual race, you know, to the virtual race side. What is that, you know, how has that been and what is that like for you? Yeah, so, you know, as soon as this all happened, of course, like everybody, all of our plans kind of went out the window, uh, like so many companies. So we, you know, for two reasons, number one, we just needed something to stay in business. And secondly, we really recognize that the, the, our participants and the runners in the community were craving something to sort of get back to, you know, to, to hearing from and seeing and being a part of something bigger than themselves than just going out and running. And so we started with our Carolinas Together virtual challenge. And I'll be honest with you, I thought, you know, if we get a couple hundred people, that would be great. Um, and we got 1400 people and we, and I really think a lot of those people, along with wanting to do, you know, the virtual challenge and, and the community aspect of that, we're also really just being supportive of start to finish. So that, that was great to, you know, great to see. Um, so from there, when we saw that, wow, this is a, something that people want to do, you know, people, I think, for the most part, would rather be at an in-person event. But if we can't do that, I think this is a good alternative. So we started branching that out and we are working with some national organizations like Black Girls Run. Um, we have some schools that were, we, ha we had a school in Gaston County that was just trying to reach out to their students, you know, as a way to connect with their students. Um, we have the City of Fort Mill Parks and Rec Department as a way to connect with their employees and the, and the residents that live there. So it's really been a diverse group of people that have sort of taken us up on this and let us put on these virtual challenges for them. And I think they've all found it to be a great way to just to reconnect with people as we're all so 
you know, separated right now. Yeah, it really has been. I know I've been a part of your virtual races and just having that and seeing people like uh, using Strava and seeing the community and the kudos and all the, you know, high fives along the way. Um, it's been, it's been an awesome way uh, to stay connected. So do you foresee in the future virtual, you know, it's not going to go away. It's going to kind of stay as part of your business now moving forward, even if in person, when, not if, when in person comes back, when, when? Um, that virtual is going to be still part of that. I do. Yeah. I really think that it's a great way for, you know, there are a lot of people out there, I think that are runners or walkers and they love it, but they just aren't ready to come to a, an in-person event yet. So I think this is great for them. And I think, you know, there are some organizations that for whatever reason, it doesn't work out for them to have an in-person event, but they still have fundraising needs and they want to get their message across. And this can be a great thing for them. And then there are these national organizations that have people all over the country. And so you know, trying to get everybody together for an in-person event is just not really feasible, too much travel involved. So this has been great for them, you know, to really be able to connect with their people and all be kind of working toward the same goal. Um, so I do, I think that this, these virtual events will be around and I think all of our races will have a virtual component. Um, there's really, you know, there's no reason not to. Um, and then we're also, trying to do some different things to keep, especially now when we can't do in-person races, but I think we'll even keep doing this to have some events that are still only virtual. So we're, we're, um, we've launched one called Charlotte Art and Soul. So it's C-L-T art and S-O-L-E dot com. Um, and it's an event where we've picked four neighborhoods and we, every Friday, you get an email with the routes for the next week. And there are three routes. So there's like a two mile route, four mile route, six mile route. And along these routes, we have audio with the, you know, the art that's on the route. So we talk about who the artist is and a little bit about the, the work of art. So I think there are some really cool things that we can do with, you know, either getting people out that don't want to come to an in-person race or exploring different parts of Charlotte or getting people together that wouldn't normally maybe get together, connecting people um, who wouldn't otherwise be able to connect. So we're excited about, you know, the possibilities that this really brings us. It's, it's almost a whole new, you know, way of doing business. So it's exciting. It is. And I, and I love the creative, like it, it, it forces you to be creative, forces you to think outside the box. And um, I love the fact of, of this particular way that you're doing it because yeah, it reaches kind of anybody really, because there's parts of the community that I know I have not explored and something like that would definitely like I would be in on doing, you know, because I want to get my run in and then, Oh wait, I get to see more of Charlotte that maybe I don't know. So I think that's yeah. awesome. And yeah, then, when we this this industry is so fast paced, you know, we're just working crazy around the clock all the time normally. And so as much as I don't want the um I didn't want the in-person events to end, you know, I can say that the silver lining of this um having to stay at home has been that we have had some more time to really sit and think about, okay, how can we do things differently and better for our participants? So you know, we don't want to offer the same, keep offering the same thing year after year. So try and be more creative and think of, you know, more interesting ideas. So that has been a blessing. That's awesome. And, and I love it that when you, that you can look at it as a silver lining, um, cause it's easy to get caught up in what's not happening versus some of, you know, all the good that is happening. So that's pretty cool. If, so with your races and your virtual races, I know that um, like our Be Amazing race, we're going to benefit girls on the run. I'm super stoked about that because it's about the giving back component. But can anyone reach out to you from like a charity, an organization, corporate, you know, to set up a virtual race? Yes, absolutely. We, um, because of this COVID situation and, and because we know that a lot of companies and organizations are you know, having to be tight financially, we've developed a no risk um, alternative 
to doing these virtual races. So there, there's no minimums and there's no, there's no fee for us to do it. You know, we charge the participants, the organization, you know, we can fundraise around it, get sponsorship. So it's been great for organizations when there, there's really no reason not to do it. If, you know, you, if they have an interest and um, they think that it would be something that their employees or members c would get into, I would really urge somebody in that situation to call me and let's just talk through it and see if we think that, you know, it would be something that would work because it really, I think it's been a great, um, it's been a great service for a lot of people. That's awesome. What, what's the best way for somebody to reach you if they're interested? They can email me at um, info at s2fcharlotte.com. So it's s, the number two, f, charlotte.com. Awesome. Uh, and that comes right to me and, and we can just set up a time. You, you know, it's, it's best just to set up a time to talk. I have some um, documents that I can send that sort of lay it all out. But if we can just sit and talk through it, we can figure out. There's a lot of different directions we could go. Um, we could do, you know, a four week challenge, a six week challenge, just a one week, um, one, you know, one distance. And so we can really customize it to uh, the audience that people are trying to reach. That's awesome. Well, so I want to ask you this, we're going to kind of steer away from this and go back to running. What would you, as far as like from somebody that's wanting to start, when we talked about, you know, maybe a virtual race is the first start, but what advice would you give someone that is looking to start to run? Like they set this goal, like I want to do a 5k. What's, you know, what would you say to them first before getting started? Yeah. Well, the local running stores are the, the best resource for, you know, running, not just running shoes, but just running information. The people that work there are there because they love to run. They understand running. They understand training. So there's lots of great local stores. We own Charlotte Running Company, um, but there's Run for Your Life and Ultra Running. And so there's lots of great running stores. So find one close to you. They're local businesses. They're locally owned. You know, so your money is staying in the Charlotte community. So I really would, would urge people to go talk to the people at their local running store. Um, the second thing is it really does help to have a running buddy. So if you can find somebody that's around your same pace or talk one of your friends into starting with you, you know, it's, it's sometimes when that alarm goes off at six o'clock and it's kind of misting out and a little bit chilly, it's pretty hard to get up and go run. But if you've got a friend, you know, that's saying, come on, let's do it. Um, it really makes it a lot easier. And I, um, I have a, a girl I run with, she lives close to me. We run about the same pace and she's my friend, therapist, you know, <laughs> motivator. Um, so Having a running buddy is key. Um, and then, you know, I would sign up for something, whether it's, you know, whether we're back to in-person racing and you could pick a race that's, you know, three months out, um, just so you have something on your radar that you're training for. Sometimes if, you know, you, you're just trying to go out and run, it can get sort of monotonous, but if you have something that you're training for, and it doesn't have to be even running, you know, you can, you can walk, you can walk, run, you can walk for a minute, run for a minute. There's lots of different ways that you can approach your training. Um, we have a, a 5k challenge that is starting. Uh, it's a five week training plan and you're, so you're, there's a coach involved. So you're able to work with a coach um, who will help you sort of get to your goal. So you do a 5k in the beginning of the five weeks and then you do a 5k at the end of the five weeks and it's just on your own so you can walk the first one you can you know run it and then just try and make your time faster um so that's going on now and then we have another one that we're going to start uh that could do either a 5k or a 10k that will probably start in august so um yeah check out s2fcharlotte.com and there, we, we're trying to have some kind of virtual training programs or, or events going on all the time. So there's something always that you can 
check out you there. Can say, there's always a challenge. There's always, like, a challenge. It, there's always a challenge. Yeah. And I'm the same way. I think accountability is everything and having a buddy, um, just like you said, walk or run, like to me, that's, well, it's key. And then it's also just that connection. So yeah. that's awesome. All right. So for your training, um, I love to ask this question. What is your song that you have to have on a playlist? Do you have a song that you have to have on a playlist when you run or train? I am probably weird in this way, but I never listen to music. What? I know. No music. Okay. So do you listen to anything? If I'm running, I, I usually am running with someone. If I'm running by myself, I'll usually put a podcast on. Do you have a favorite podcast? I listen, I love um, Armchair Expert with Dak Shepard. I like Tim Ferriss's podcast. Um, I like Nicole DeBoom's podcast on running. Uh, those are the ones that I probably pop in the most. I like Oprah's Super Soul um, Sunday podcast. Those are the ones I'd say I pop in the most. Okay. But I really, I have about probably 15 that I'm subscribed to and I love them all. I'll just sort of go through and see what seems interesting for the day. And That's why I really, I was, I was counting on there being like a certain song, but that's interesting. No. I love that because everybody's different. Like everybody has a, um, I mean, my husband, he listens to podcasts when he walks or if he goes for a run. And I do that once in a while. But I, I usually have music. So that's interesting. What, what's your song? Oh, you know, it depends on my mood. I have like three different um, playlists that I roll through. And I'm like, if you, you just threw this back at me and I'm like, what is this song? <laughs> oh, favorite song right now, Purple Hat. That's what I'm going to say. Purple what is Hat. It? Purple Hat. Oh, okay. Purple Hat. That's my, like that, that song comes on and I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> You're running your PR. <laughs> Right, and I have it on every single one of my playlists. So like, it's awesome. Well, before we wrap up, I, you know, the last thing I, I, I'm pretty much been asking every um, guest that I've had on is if there's anything on your heart right now that, you know, you feel um, like you'd like to share with the listeners. And it doesn't have to be anything that we've talked about, just maybe something on your heart that you want to share. Like this is really how we end every, every podcast. Yeah. Well, I think two things, um, you know, uh, of course, like everyone else in the country, I've been following the Black Lives Matter movement and, and I hope that we as a company can do more to, you know, encourage communities of color to come out to our events. I think um, it's getting better, but we're lacking in that. Um, so I'm trying to listen and, and um, you know, take advice from people that are really coming up with great solutions to, you know, to some of these issues. So I hope that our events can be more diverse um, and we want to do whatever we can to encourage that. Um, and secondly, I, I just really want to say how grateful I am to all of our participants, I, you know, we had our Firecracker 5K plan for Friday. And just this past Friday, the city had to deny the permit because of, you know, because of where we are with the COVID numbers. And um, I was so bummed because I really thought we were going to be able to pull it off. I do support what the city and what CMPD um, is doing. I think they're making the right decision. But I was still really bummed out. Um, so I had to write the email and tell, you know, all these people that were signed up that again, their race got canceled after we had been saying it's on, it's on, it's on. And I was so discouraged about it, but I just can't even tell you how many wonderful emails I got back from people saying, you know, like, Hey Jen, just keep your head up. You know, this is going to get better. And you guys are doing a great job. And um, when I was racing, I never wrote to the race organizer and I, people write to me and to our employees all the time and just say, thank you. And it's, it really has made me realize how important that is. And it's made me a better person, I think, because I do it more often now because so many people have done it for me. And so I try and do it for other people now. So 
um, yeah, I'm just so grateful to uh, the, the running community is such a positive group of individuals. Um, and I'm so grateful to be a part of it. That's awesome. Well, we're grateful for you to have you in our community and all that you do for, um, not just the running community or the fitness community, but the community of Charlotte. And I can say firsthand, like, I'm grateful to have you as a friend and then also be partnering with you, uh, on a race coming up. And it's just like, it's, it's inspiring. It's motivating. It's encouraging. It's, um, it's just really awesome. And, uh, I just appreciate all that you do. And, and that's why I wanted to have you on and, and, because a lot of times people don't get to see what goes on behind the curtain, you know, they don't see the people that are, um, you know, doing all the work and putting things into play. They just see the finished product. And I think it's important sometimes to pull the curtain back and say, Hey, you know, um, this is who, this is who's behind it. <laughs> and they're a really cool person and you need to know them. Uh, but I really appreciate you taking time today to talk and, um, share and, and being real and authentic, you know, about, you know, what's going on and, and where you are and, um, and, and your, your whole like outlook is, you know, that's what keeps us all going is like, even when things get hard and then we're able to find the silver lining. Um, well, thank you, Seal. I appreciate you having me on and you are, I, I also am thankful for the relationship that is you know, really, I think, gotten strong over the past, especially six months. Um, it's really hard to be down in the dumps when you're around. <laughs> I mean, it's like impossible. So it's great when I see you come across my phone. I'm like, oh, this is going to be, a, I know this is going to be a good conversation. Tell us about this upcoming event, this virtual challenge that you have that's bringing women together in a really unique way. Yeah, I'm really excited about this one. This is a challenge where we're partnering with Black Girls Run, which is an organization of women all over the country that um, love to run or walk, and it provides resources and really encouragement to them. It's a great organization. They have tons of positive energy. Um, and so we've partnered uh, with them on a challenge called E-Race Racism. And it's... Um, a 50, 100, or 200 mile challenge over six weeks, and it's two person teams. So you can either sign up individually, and then we're gonna pair you with someone else, or you can sign up with a partner. But the idea is that we're trying to sign up people from different races or different backgrounds, so that you're talking with someone that you probably wouldn't have gotten the chance to meet otherwise, probably someone in another part of the country, maybe a different age group. So it's, we're, we're pairing them up today actually. And I'm really excited to see all the connections that come out of this. I really think that women connecting is just a superpower. And um, you know, there, there's nothing we can't do when women get together um, all for the same goal. I love that. And it's such a true statement. See, I can't wait to do it. Like, and to think I get to meet somebody that I haven't met and they're not even here. I think the greatest part about this is it's getting us outside of our circles, outside of what we're familiar with and connecting us with somebody somewhere else. And just, you know, really opening up those doors for conversation and connection. Like it's just awesome. So uh, where can we find information about this challenge and when does this kick off? So it kicks off on August 15th, goes till September 30th. And the website is eraseracismbgr.com. And erase is spelled E-R-A-C-E. So eraseracismbgr.com. Well, I can't wait to be a part of it. Thank you so much again for being on the Be Amazing podcast. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you like this podcast, please like it and share it with other women in your life. For more information about SweatNet, just go to sweatnet.com or you can follow them on Instagram at sweatnet and at sweatnet charlotte. You can follow me personally on Instagram at itsealsmart. Stay tuned for next week's episode of the SweatNet Be Amazing podcast.